And today finds me in Adams County, Ohio. This is um, the edge of Appalachia Preserve, which has many parcels of land. And this land has been preserved for scenic qualities and also because there's a large variety of plants here. Both the herbaceous plants, some prairie plants that are herbaceous. We got some trees that only grow in prairie areas that are found here. And we've got some Appalachian plants that come in from the east. We've got some Midwestern plants that come in from the west. We've got some northern plants that are only found here and nowhere else to our south in Ohio. And uh, so it's a very unique place and for a lot of reasons. A lot of uh, interesting cliffs around here and waterfalls. And I'm on this uh, dolomite bluff here. You can maybe see a little of the dolomite in the background there. It's kind of obscured. But there's a lot of thick layers of dolomite here that are very similar to that found at Niagara Falls. Same age. And it's pretty much a continuous layer um, from here to Niagara Falls, but it's not always at the surface. What we do have is a visitor from the north here that's made itself quite at home on these dolomite cliffs and near the cliffs. We've got some northern white cedar. This is one of the first plants I put on this channel, but um, I didn't have the proper camera equipment to stitch videos. So I'm going to replace that with this more comprehensive study that's all in one clip of the northern white cedar and the re eastern red cedar, which is also growing on this limestone or dolomite uh, knoll here. And our northern white cedar is very common in southern Canada, southeast Canada, and upstate New York and New England. It can be found in wetlands. It can be found in well-drained soils as well, kind of like the red, the red uh, maple. And we've got some needles on this tree that are scale-like. Let's see if we'll get that to come into focus here. And they're kind of platy and they're flat. So as we look at the foliage of this evergreen tree, it's all in one plane. It doesn't stick out in all directions. On a sunny day, it reflects the light quite well, and you can see the trees shining as you're hiking. Well, we've got a gray, gray day today here, so that won't be possible. And this northern white cedar, if we find a dead branch underneath the tree, and these lower branches are dead, they don't get enough sun to stay alive, and we snap it, we can see the inside of the wood. On a cloudy day here, it's a little tricky, but it's... The same color there's it's a it's a light color a light tan or almost white so there's the reason why it's called the northern white cedar and just a few feet away from that northern white cedar we've got some eastern red cedar growing on this same limestone knob a dolomite knob here and the lower branches that are dead if we snap those off on an eastern red cedar you can see the interior wood or the heartwood is more of a purplish hue. You can see that clearly on that branch where I snapped it off and on the part where I snapped the branch off as well. And these do make good fire starters. Usually they lose their bark um, and the bark itself is fibrous and it could make a good fire starter too if you're in a place where you don't have the preferred fire starter of the outdoorsman, which is yellow and paper or birch. And in this part of Ohio, we don't have any of those birches. We do have some black birch nearby, but that's not quite as good. And let's get back to the foliage of this northern white cedar. And as I mentioned at the start of this video, it tends to lay flat. It is smooth or pleasing to the touch. These scales are all stitched together, if you can see them as they come into focus here. And uh, they're not bristly. And they tend to shine on sunny days, and it's a common landscape plant. The hybrids of this uh, northern white cedar, the plant is called Arborvitae at your local nursery, and is a common landscape plant. And they can get to be quite tall, actually. Some of these trees are 50, 60 feet high. They can get to be a couple feet in diameter, but they're slow growing, so that takes many, many generations. Let's just go around the corner here, and let's take a look at the eastern red cedar. And these trees are easy to tell apart. I'm doing them both today because it's uncommon to find them both on the same trail. But not unheard of in this part of Ohio. Um, Clifton Gorge up in Greene County has both of them side by side for comparison. But you don't need them side by side to learn them. They're quite easy to tell apart. 
I do have a guest commentator with me today on the phone. And this gentleman's helping me with some of my videos on my other channel and providing a little, uh, you know, I get tired of hearing my own voice on these channels. So let's put another person's voice in here for just a minute. Say hello, sir. Good, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. And uh, what can you tell us about the leaves or foliage on these eastern red cedar trees? Oh, they are friendly and sometimes not. Sometimes they're friendly and sometimes they're not. So it has some nice, even and smooth, scaly foliage like we see on this tree here where it's pleasing to the touch maybe not as pleasing to the touch as the northern white cedar but pleasing to the touch nonetheless but they are much smaller needles stitched together a little plate stitched together and they go out in all directions from the branch so they're not in a one one plane or one layer but on the same tree or even the same branch sometimes we can find some needles that aren't quite so friendly that are actually quite uh, pointy and very bristly to the touch. I've got some in focus right here. And this, from what I'm reading, this is often where the tree is growing the fastest. And these bristly needles can be all you find on some of these trees like this one right here. So they come out in all directions, and they're very bristly. Let's see if we can get these to come into focus here. It's a little dim today. It's been dim all week. We don't have the shadow issues like we'd have on a sunny day. But it's a little hard to get things bright enough to make good videos. But I think you can see it right there. It just came into focus, and those are like little spines coming out of this branch of this eastern red cedar tree. So we have both types of foliage Sometimes both on the same tree, and sometimes the very small trees only have this spiny foliage and not the smoother, platy foliage of these trees. And let's continue studying the northern white cedar. We've come down the trail about a quarter mile from where that uh, last video was made. We've got some big blocks of this dolomite. We kind of break off the main cliff above us here and slowly creep their way down the hill. Gravity will do that if you have enough time. But there's a whole forest of this northern white cedar here and has some interesting bark that's different from the red cedar bark. We'll look at some larger red cedar trees right up the trail here, but this is pretty much all northern white right here. And it has this obvious pattern of ridges and furrows that you just don't get on the, on the eastern red cedar. So what we've got here, these aren't terribly wide, maybe about as wide as a pencil, but there's an obvious pattern of ridges and furrows that goes the whole way up the tree. And I've seen trees where these are actually spiraled, look like um, what you'd see in front of a barber shop. There's one up the trail here I might add in a few minutes that's done that. So uh, interesting bark and it's different from the red cedar bark and there's a whole bunch of it growing back here. This is all northern white cedar. Again, if I have any doubt, find a dead a dead branch and break it off and if it's clear, light color the whole way through, then we know we've got a northern white cedar. Another fortunate thing we found on this section of trail, since there's so many large mature trees here, some of them have dropped their cones. And my guest commentator is going to use one word to describe the cones that fall off a northern white cedar tree. What is that one word? Very tiny. Very tiny. You wouldn't even know they're cones. Well, I've got some here on display on my uh, the case for my tablet that I use to make these videos. Got a U.S. currency dime there. And these itty bitty little cones are about a quarter inch size, maybe about the size of a pea. And you can see some of them are still attached to the branch on the bottom of the screen here. I've also got a better look at the platy foliage. These needles are actually little plates stitched together. They're kind of pretty when you look at them. Here's some there that have turned brown. 
So the leaf litter in this glade of northern white cedar is an auburn brown color. It's actually quite attractive. And let's continue studying our northern white cedar. I'm going to put the wraps on the study here with these trees here. And we're going to move on to eastern red cedar with a little more detail because it's a very common tree and it occurs in many different habitats. And uh, we'll, we'll continue on with that. But here's our northern white cedar growing, uh, again, below this dolomite bluff. So that's where it's often found in the mid-Ohio Valley here in these special locations. I did find it in a very nice little preserve in southwest Virginia last year near the Clinch River. And that's on my other channel. And I believe it's called the, um, the Pinnacle Nature Preserve in Russell County, Virginia, found on the channel called Let's Dig a Little Deeper. And I did more than just plants on that trip. Um, it was all-encompassing study of what was in that park. Here's our furrowed bark. Not deeply furrowed, but obviously furrowed bark on our northern white cedar. Hugging the banks of this little rivulet here. Not even a stream, just a little creek here. And these trees are full height. They're maybe not as big as they can get around, but they're about as tall as they can get, 60 to 80 feet. And they're slow growing trees. So a foot diameter tree may be quite old. And just down the trail here, we've got some very large Eastern red cedar for comparison. And again, these trees are about as tall as they're gonna get. And they're probably 60 feet and about a foot in diameter. And the eastern red cedar was often used for fence posts. It's very rot resistant. And it has this real fibrous bark when it's this old. It comes off in little fibers. That can be used as a fire starter. It can resemble some ridges and furrows, but it pretty much is more flaky and fibery and not too ridged and furrowed. Here's another tree right over here with a similar texture. So a large eastern red cedar has a different appearance from the ground level than that of a northern white cedar. And again, these dead branches, when we break them off, have that red color to the heartwood. So that's how we can tell them apart. We'll continue studying the eastern red cedars. I've got some gladed areas near where I live that have the cones on the trees easily available for study. And we'll continue on with that in a few days here. And let's continue our study of the eastern red cedar. I'm about 75 miles uh, northwest of the location at the edge of Appalachia Preserve. This is western Montgomery County, Ohio. This is the Germantown Reserve, which was built to control flooding after the 1913 floods that inundated the mid-Ohio Valley here, including the city of Dayton. So a lot of this land was in agricultural use until then, and has since been let go back to woods. And much of this land, the soil was heavily eroded and lacking in good nutrients, and that's a place where we often find the eastern red cedar as a pioneer species on abandoned farms where the soil is not too wet, fairly well drained, and also very poor, uh, nutrient poor soils is where we find it. It's common on hillside locations in abandoned farmland throughout the uh, mid Ohio Valley here. Northern Kentucky hills are covered in red cedar. And again, we can tell it's red cedar when we snap off these lower branches and look at the inside. You can see that red or purplish color on the inside of the dead branch. And again, these make great fire starters. The bark peels off them on its own, and it leaves you a nice, dry, tindery, small branch for lighting fires in a survival situation. This glade here is almost exclusively medium-sized red cedar trees. Some are up to 8, 10 inches in diameter. All of them have the dead branches on the bottom and the live branches up top. And Mother Nature always has another uh, 
plan for these woods as they go from farmland to forest. The next ones that are coming in, the seedlings that are coming in underneath these cedar trees, the next generation of trees are actually sugar maples. They got that opposite branching, you can see right here. And the buds are golden brown. And these trees are large enough that they're actually producing cones. And they're covering the forest floor here. I've got my guest commentator on the phone again today. And he's going to tell you what these seed cones from the red cedar trees look like. What do they look like, sir? Wild blueberries. They look just like wild blueberries, the itty-bitty blueberries you'd get out hiking, not the kind you find at the store. I've got some on my uh, tablet case here for demonstration. You can see how big they are compared to that U.S. currency dime. They're very small, no more than a quarter inch in size on the right. And what we have on the left is the white, the northern white cedar cones that I filmed previously. Let's go down the trail here and take a better look at these trees. And we've come down the trail just a few hundred yards from that mature forest of red cedar trees, eastern red cedar trees. That's about as tall as they would get around here. And as I showed the other tree species, the sugar maple especially, were taking over those woods. Well, if we turn back the time on that forest or that glade, maybe 50 years, this is what it would have looked like. And this is more open land that was maybe more recently abandoned farmland. These structures you see in the middle here are man-made that are to protect the planted seedlings that the Park Service is trying to use to reestablish these woods, and that's to keep the deer from munching them. But the red cedar trees, the eastern red cedar trees, have taken over this farmland where they can. And as I showed earlier, you know, one other way we can remember eastern red cedar is the youngest sprouts here. This is a very small tree here, just a few years old is purplish or red in color even the foliage is and the branches are and um i've got some of the seed cones on a tree down the trail here just a few feet these are the flowers here and it's more like you're more likely to find a tree with these flowers on them and they haven't opened yet and it gives it a rusty color as you're walking around you see these rusty colored cedar trees and that's what you're seeing here i believe from what i can tell I'm looking this up, these are the male flowers. I'll let my botanist friends confirm that with me. And just around the corner here, these um, red eastern red cedar trees are mostly what they call dioecious, which means the male and the female trees are separate. So we've got the female tree down here with these seed cones. And I can tell you from doing a lot of hiking, you're more likely to find the male trees with those oranges colored flowers, rusty colored flowers, and you are to find these blueberry type seed cones on the female trees. But that is what we do have here. What we were walking in before was larger trees where the seed cones had dropped to the forest floor, but here they are still on these branches. And man, if a guy didn't know his plants, he'd say, boy, that looks like blueberries, let me eat a few. I don't believe these are toxic, but I don't believe they're very tasty either. So that's our study of the northern white and eastern red cedars. And both are common in places. The northern white is common in southern and central Canada, in the inland areas of upstate New York and Vermont, and down parts of the mid-Ohio Valley in these special habitats. And the eastern red cedar is common almost entirely east of the Great Plains from Texas all the way up to the New England states.